Whistler Mountain is Haunted, Part 1. Be careful who you contact with a CB radio. Three bodies found in a remote log cabin, a gun lying beside them that hadn't been fired. The police, the courts, the local media, all baffled. But I was there. It all started with a woman sitting beside the cabin CB radio, searching through the frequencies. Hello, can anyone hear me? Anyone? And the man who answered her. Well, howdy, stranger. This is Chopper, reading you loud and clear. Over. Oh, hello, uh, 10 4. <laughs> Looks like I found myself a rookie rig. First lesson, honey, and any transmission with over. Shows you're done talking, over. Right, got it. Over. Nice. So what's your handle, honey? Over. My handle? Well, my name is Rose. Over. Nice to talk to you, Rose. Folks call me Chopper. Now, I ain't exactly the sharpest tool in the box, but even I can tell you're not from around these parts, over. No, I'm from England. I'm on holiday with my fiancé, over. Oh, pair of lovebirds. You guys road tripping cross state together, over? No, we've rented a cabin, actually. The tour operator said it used to be a hunting lodge, but it's been converted into a holiday home. I think that's why the place still has this old CB radio, over? Sounds about right, Rose. Oftentimes, snow comes down hard and fast out in the sticks. In years gone by, you'd hear tales of hunters stranded in a lodge for weeks on end. CB radio was a must, so they could contact the outside world. Over. Oh, I see. You know, it's funny, it's so isolated up here. There's no phone signal, no Wi-Fi, nothing like that. This radio is all Michael and I have. I, I guess we're a bit like hunters of old. We're getting the proper American adventure experience. Over. So, are you enjoying your big adventure, Rose? Over. Yes. The scenery here is stunning. Over. Great to hear. Say, old Chopper's curious. Where's your fiancé? Michael, wasn't it? Where is he now? He on the horn with you two? Over. No, Michael's not here. He's, well, he's gone for a walk. Over. Mighty fine evening for it. Over. I suppose it is. So, what about you, Chopper? Where are you right now? Are you still driving? Will you be out of range soon? Over. Well, I'm in my rig, but I'm parked up on a cozy little road just off the interstate. Got a real nice view of Whistler Mountain. Over. Wow, you're probably not far from our cabin. We're a little ways up Whistler Mountain. Weaver's Rise? Do you know it? Can't say I do, Rose. I'm from out of state. But, uh, if I'm nearby, that explain why the signal's so good. Why I can hear you so well. Over. I see. So how come you're not driving, Chopper? Are, are you on a rest stop? Over? Yeah, something like that. Say, tell me if I'm overstepping the mark here, but I'm curious. A beautiful evening, your sweetheart goes for a stroll along the mountainside, and you stay in the cabin to play with an old radio? Everything all right up there? Over. It's okay that you asked, Chopper. I suppose it's not hard to tell that something's up. Michael and I had an argument. A, a bad one. Over. Well, I'm real sorry to hear that, Rose. What happened? Over. It's all really stupid. Really. But we're arguing about the date of our wedding. I think Michael is sick of me asking about it. He got angry and stormed off. He shouted something about walking to Pitwell. But that's miles away, and, uh, sorry, you really don't want to hear this. No, no, it, it, it's good to talk, Rose. What's the problem with the wedding date? Uh, do you both want to get hitched at different times? Over? It's not that. After we got engaged, Michael lost his job. 
It took him a few months to find a new one, and in that time we burnt through all of our savings. Michael wanted to put off arranging the wedding until we'd built them back up again. But we've both been working for a year now. Michael has a much better job now than he had before. We can afford this expensive holiday, but apparently we still can't afford a wedding. It's frustrating. I just want to pin down a date, but he keeps brushing me off. Over. Well, that's a pickle, Rose. I can see why it's getting to you. Do you think Michael might be worried about losing his job again? Uh, afraid he won't be able to support you? Being out of a job might have hurt his pride. Over? I don't think it's that. He seems to be doing really well with his new job. I think he gets on a lot better with his new colleagues, too. I'm just worried that... that he's having second thoughts about marrying me, and that's why he doesn't want to talk about a date. Over. I hope that's not the case, Rose. Now, I ain't no love guru, but... I was going steady with the lady once, and I was blaming her for things that weren't her fault. When she up and left, I realized I should have talked to her about what was going on instead of lashing out. Over? That's a shame. I'm sorry, Chopper. Over. It's all right. It was a long time ago. Point is, communication is key. Have you sat down with Michael and told him everything you just told me? Told him you're worried he's having second thoughts? And that if he is, you want to talk about it? Over? No, but maybe you're right, Chopper. Maybe I should. If he ever comes back, that is. Over. When exactly did he leave? Over. Not long before I turned on the radio and found you. I, I just wanted to find someone who could actually talk to me rather than run off in a huff. Over. I can see why you'd feel that way, Rose. Over. Thanks. I must admit I'm worried, though. It'll be dark soon, and this cabin is so secluded. I'm a bit scared Michael won't be able to find his way back. Over. Don't worry, Rose. He'll turn up. Over. I hope so. Anyway, I better go and turn on all the lights, stoke the fire so Michael can see the chimney smoking from a distance. It, it was nice talking to you, Chopper. Over. Pleasure was all mine, Rose. Good luck to you, to both of you. Over and out. A click, and the CB was switched off. And now I wait. And so she did wait, and she did stoke the fire. And she did turn on all the lights, all whilst I watched on, helpless. Nightfall, and there was anxious energy in the cabin. Where is that idiot? It wasn't long until the CB was switched back on. Hello? Can you hear me, Chopper? That you, Rose? Everything all right up there? Over? Thank God you're still there, Chopper. My, my fiancé, Michael, he hasn't come back yet. It's dark and I'm getting really worried something happened to him. Over. Are you still alone up there? Over. Yes, just me. I know Pitwell is a long way off, but Michael should have calmed down and turned around. He should be back by now. What if he slipped and banged his head? Or bears? Are there bears up here? I don't know what to do, Chopper. Over. How long do you have the cabin for? How long till the next lot of vacationers move in? Over. We have to be out of here in four days. But why does that matter? Over. You need to listen to me, Rose. I have Michael. Over. You have Michael? What? Well, I don't understand. I got Michael, and I knocked him unconscious. He's tied up and gagged in the back of my rig. Over. Why, why would you do that? What's going on? I have Michael, and if you want him to live past tonight, you need to do exactly as I say. Do you understand? Over. Please don't hurt him. What do you want? Money? I have some money. This ain't about your money, Rose. Michael will make it through tonight, so long as you do exactly as I say. Go against me and he dies. Do we have an understanding? Over. 
Yes, please. Just don't hurt him, Chopper. Do what I tell you, and ain't nothing gonna happen to him. Now, I'm gonna drive up to you. Then I'll stop outside your cabin. When you see me, come out with your hands raised, pockets turned out. You understand? Over. Yes, I understand. Good. I need you to promise me you won't try nothing. If you do, it'll be you and Michael that come off worse. This can all go down without anyone getting hurt. But if it comes to it, I can and I will do bad things. Do you promise me you won't try nothing? Over. I I promise. Good. Now I need to know that you still have all the lights in your cabin switched on, and that your chimney is still smoking. Is that right, Rose? Over. Yes, lights and fire. Please, just don't hurt Michael. Please. If you do as I say, no one is going to get hurt. I'm coming to find you now. Weavers rise a little way up the mountain. Remember, hands raised, pockets turned out. Are we clear, Rose? Over. Yes, yes, I'll do whatever you say. Glad to hear. Over and out. They say the killer always returns to the scene of the crime. I'm afraid the killer will come back here for a new vessel. Now I'm finally telling my story. I'm afraid I'll be silenced before I can finish. But keeping control is exhausting. I must take a respite more soon. Part 2. Money is the root of all evil. The fear is all-consuming. Am I drawing the killer back here by telling my story? On top of that, my vessel fights me for control, but I must persist. I must shine a light on the evil that happened here. It didn't take Chopper long to drive up the mountain track and arrive. I watched as he parked his van under a tree near the cabin. The cabin door was open in a flash. I'm here. I I've done everything you've asked. Please, please don't hurt Michael. Chopper stepped out of the van, a torch in one hand and a gun in the other. Stop right there, Rose. We need to have a little talk. Oh God, please don't shoot me. I've done everything you've told me to do. Oh, the shooter's just a precaution to make sure you- Have you shot Michael? No, I haven't shot anyone. I want to- Why do you have a van? You said you had a truck. Rose, calm down. Don't worry about what I said on the horn. Listen to what I'm saying now. I don't have Michael. You don't- have no i don't have michael i just told you i did i never had a truck neither it ain't safe for me to transmit my true situation so what's going on why are you here all you need to know is that i need a place to lay low for a while but michael still isn't back he won't know what's going on if he sees you with a gun. What if- We'll talk about that soon, Rose. Right now, we got work to do. Work? What work? We need to cover my minivan with branches so she's not visible from the track. Now, start moving toward the minivan, Rose. Okay. I want you to lean a few of those branches against the minivan to cover her up. If there ain't enough on the ground, snap some off from those bushes. She started doing as she was told. You aren't going to help. I gotta keep my gun on you, Rose. But like I said, you do exactly as you're told and you won't get hurt. And what if Michael comes back? Will, will he get hurt? No, no, he won't. When he comes back, you'll tell him Chopper's in charge. Then you'll cuff him to make sure he don't try any heroics. Handcuff him? With what? Chopper tapped his trouser pocket with his torch. There was a dull, metallic clink. The cuffs in my pocket. Why do you need handcuffs in the first place? They're another precaution. Precaution is important in my line of work, Rose. And what exactly is your line of work? 
That ain't something you need to know. Just keep on covering up the minivan. You're doing a real good job so far. And what if Michael doesn't come back at all? I told you how worried I am. What, what if he's still out there in the dark? What if I need to go out and look for him? I've already looked for him, Rose. Keep working. I didn't say stop. She did as she was told. I went looking for Michael after we first spoke. I have a decent map, so I knew which way he'd be moving if he was going to Pitwell. There's only one trail he could take. My plan was to knock him out and toss him in the minivan. Leverage, so I could come up here. Let me guess. When you couldn't find him, you just decided to lie and tell me you had? That's right, Rose. But me not being able to find him, it means he must have made it to Pitwell, safe. He's probably hauled up in some bar working on how best to say sorry to you. Ain't no need to worry. And if he comes back, you promise you won't hurt him? I don't want to hurt no one unless I have to. She heaved one last pine branch over the minivan. Will that do? Yeah, minivan looks like one giant bush. Good work, Rose. So, what now? Start moving down the track, Rose. We're gonna have ourselves a nice sit-down whilst we wait for Michael to walk back. Catch him unaware, so he doesn't cause no trouble. And so they walk down the track, and then into the dark forest lining it. I followed. Half an hour later, they were sitting on a pair of tree stumps near the track, waiting in ambush for Michael. Ancient forest towered over us. Chopper still had his firearm, of course. You're very comfortable with that gun. Afraid that's what a life full of unsavory work and regret gets you. On the radio, you said you were going steady with a lady once. You can't regret that. That was a long time ago. Reckon it's best we just sit quietly and wait for Michael. Why don't you tell me about her, Chopper? After I told you everything about Michael, after you turned it all against me, the least you could do is talk to me. You really don't need to know about her, Rose. But I want to know, and sitting in the dark waiting for Michael, it's not like we have anything better to do than talk. I suppose it's hard to disagree with that. Exactly. So tell me, what was her name? Her name was, still is, Lori. You said you blamed her for things that weren't her fault. What things were you talking about? Chopper let out a long sigh. When I met Lori, I had to stop doing the sort of uh, illicit work I'd done all my life. To keep ahead of the law, I'd always taken up in a new state every few months. That life weren't suited to anything more than a flash fire romance. So you straightened out when you met Lori? Tried to, but I didn't exactly have the most uh, respectable resume. Ain't many places looking to hire a guy like me. All I could get was odd jobs. Money got tight. I started taking it out on her. I said some bad things. Shouldn't have been surprised when she up and left. Did you try to get her back? No. I let her go. And then you fell back into your old life and work? This sort of work? Yeah. Tell me more about Lori. What do you mean? Well, how did you meet? I was celebrating after a job. Some bar near the safe house. Not exactly the smartest move. But I ain't exactly the smartest guy. Anyway, the bar had one of those uh, karaoke machines. And I was drunk enough to give singing a shot. Ended up choosing Sonny and Cher. But I needed a partner. I put it out to the bar and lo and behold, Lori appeared from the crowd. I can't sing worth a damn, but she had the voice of an angel. By the end of the song, I was smitten. So you stuck around just to be with her? Yeah. Once the heat was off, the other boys moved on to their next jobs, but not me. I had reason to stay. So you started dating? Yes, ma'am. I don't know what Lori saw in me, but she agreed to let me take her out. I still had money from the job. So I wined and dined her and took her on day trips to the beach. Our first kiss was at the local zoo. 
right in front of the sea lions. I swear the damn things cheered us on. Happiest day of my life. Do you know where Lori is now? Last I heard, she'd set up on the East Coast. Works in a laundromat, or so I hear. Have you ever thought of going to see her, telling her you're sorry? Sometimes. Well, a lot, as a matter of fact. But if I ever do show up on her doorstep, I don't want to be the same broke lowlife I was before. I want to have money in the bank. I want Lord to know that I can look after her, treat her right. I guess that's kind of why I'm doing this job. If you need money to impress Lori, why didn't you just take mine? Chopper gave Rose a grave look. This ain't about your holiday tokens, Rose. There are millions of dollars at stake tonight. They say money is the root of all evil. Fitting, then, that such riches are what drew such a monster to the mountain. Part 3 over and out. Every creaking floorboard, every rustling leaf, I wonder if it's the killer. Have they found me again? The fear weakens my hold on this vessel. She will win the battle for control soon, but I have to share what I heard, what I saw. They were still talking in the forest, sitting on their tree stumps. I was there, too. Not that they could see me. Millions. There are millions of dollars at stake tonight. How, because of what, since then? I ain't telling you that, Rose. The less you know, the safer you are, from me and from others. She took a deep breath and looked Chopper in the eye. I don't believe you have it in you to hurt me, Chopper. I don't think you're a bad person. I think you're a good person that's lost his way. Chopper said nothing to that. Is that gun even loaded? Uh, no. Chopper, let's stop this stupid hostage pretense so I can help you. Tell me, what's in the van? I can't, Rose. Well, you can at least tell me what's going wrong because something obviously has. Why else would you need to invade a holiday cabin you only just found out about? Why don't you start by explaining the problem that forced you to come up here? You won't be able to help, Rose. You won't know that until you tell me. And even if I can't help, talking a problem over with someone, that can be helpful in its own right. Chopper was silent. Come on, Chopper. Let me help you. Tell me what's going on. Aw, oh, heck. I'm collecting two halves of a single shipment. Once I have them both, my job is to deliver them to a buyer. And this shipment, it, it's what's in the van? No, that's the problem. I only have half the shipment. Where I was parked up when you called, I was waiting there for another driver to arrive with the second half of the shipment so we could load it into my minivan. But he never arrived. That's right. It was way past time when you called over the CB. I was worried something had happened to the other driver, so I was trying to come up with a new plan. Word spreads. If someone worse than the likes of me had got to the other driver, or the cops had caught up with him, they might be coming for me next. But you said your cabin was secluded and hidden. A good place for me to lie low and figure out my next move. And have you figured it out? No. Then let's work it out together. Why can't you just drive to the buyer? Explain that the other guy never turned up with the second half of the shipment. Rose, the people in my line of work, you don't just turn up with only half of what they're expecting. It wouldn't end well for me. Okay, is there any way you can track down the second half of the shipment? Contact someone else involved to see what happened to the other driver? It don't work like that. We're all independent, and there are certain steps involved to keep the buyer separate from the heist. This shipment came from a heist? Heck, I really don't think that I should... We want the same thing, Chopper. You want to figure this out and be on your way. I want that too. Let's get your money so that you can leave and be with Lori. You... you really want to help me? Yes, yes, and if you tell me everything, I might just be able to. Chopper nodded. Okay, 
Heist was a museum bust. Van is full of paintings, uh, gemstones, stuff like that. When we got nearby, the other driver was supposed to call for Chopper over the CB. Say he'd come from the Blue Hen State. I had to answer, never been, but I hear the burgers are great. Then what? Then we were supposed to meet up and load his half of the merchandise into my van. After that, I was supposed to drive the full shipment to the buyer and collect payment. And who is the buyer? Where are they? I don't know the buyer's real name. Alias is uh, Thane. I was supposed to deliver the shipment to him by noon tomorrow. An abandoned airfield 40 miles up the interstate. Okay, so we still have plenty of time. It's not even midnight. But we won't solve anything by sitting out here. We need to go back into the cabin. We should be by the radio in case the other driver calls. He might have been held up. He might be calling for you right now. But Michael... Don't worry about Michael. When he comes back, I'll explain everything to him. I want to help you. I want to help you get back to Lori. I, uh... Just promise me you'll head straight to Lori when this is all over. Promise me that you'll tell her you're sorry and that you're going straight for good. You got yourself a deal, ma'am. I promise. Let's get back to the cabin. We'll check the radio and go from there. And with that, they headed back toward the cabin. A final terrible mistake. The cabin was exactly as they left it. Is the cabin door unlocked? Yep. Chopper walked in and sniffed the air. Funny smell in here. It's an old place. The radio room is just past the bookshelf. First door on the right. Chopper stepped into the radio room and his jaw dropped. What in God's name? Behind him, the click of a gun's hammer. You're a rank amateur, Chopper. Safe to say the gun I stashed behind the Bible is definitely loaded. Who, uh, who are these dead people? Chopper was pointing at my corpse, at Michael's corpse right beside it. The couple that were holidaying when I got here, the real Rose and Michael. But, but you said... Uh, I said I was a poor, lovesick tourist and you fell for it. But why would you lie to me? Because the other driver died before I could get everything I needed to know out of him. You killed the other driver? Sooner than I wanted to. The fat idiot bled out before he could tell me exactly where and when he was meeting you. Never told me the buyer's name and location either. He did manage to tell me that you were called Chopper, though. You might be interested to know that his last words were, Chopper, radio waves, Whistler Mountain. Whistler Mountain is a big place, but he had a CB radio with him. I knew coming here and searching for a Chopper over the airwaves was my best chance of finding you. But why would you kill the real Rose and Michael? I needed a way to lure you to me. I knew when your contact didn't turn up that you'd be panicking. So I looked for a likely safe house around Whistler Mountain. Waving a secluded cabin in front of you was a surefire way to entice you in. Men so often lack the imagination to come up with anything beyond what's put on a plate in front of them. I'm not complaining, though. Now I have both shipments, the name and location of the buyer, even a delivery van. But everything we talked about, Lori... Lori is better off without you, Chopper. Surely after tonight's incompetence, that's obvious? No, please. Over and out, Chopper. The woman pretending to be me fired. Chopper crumpled to the floor. His empty gun tumbled out across the floorboards. Then the woman took the van and fled. And that's how I ended up dead in a log cabin between the corpses of my fiancé and a man I'd never met. They say the dead linger when they have unfinished business. They took my body away, but my essence remained. The police, local reporters, even kids looking for cheap thrills, all of them came and went, but I remained trapped on this mountain for years. I wanted the world to know what had happened, but I had no voice, no form. Then came the girl, a true crime obsessive. She was attracted to the cabin by the grisly tales circulating the nearby towns. She has the gift the sight, just like I did growing up. I pounced. I'll release my vessel soon, after I've burned the cabin to the ground, of course. No need for me to linger, I feel my passing coming on, like a heavy fever finally lifting. My only regret, that evil woman is still out there, and she has my name. 
Ha 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 